Hi, this is the Science Chef. Welcome to the fourth part of a series on the 2023 jam preparations. In the past three series, we solved questions on the year 2017 UTM examination. As we promised in our last tutorial, we said that starting from this tutorial, we'll be solving questions on a topical basis, specifically organic chemistry. So today we'll be solving questions on the model year 2022 organic chemistry questions. If you'd like to watch our solutions to the year 2017 UTM examinations, then check the link in the description. So let's start. The first question here says, alkanes are hydrocarbons with A, double bonds, B, single bonds, C, triple bonds, and D, no bond. Alkanes, what's the general formula for alkanes? The general formula for alkanes is CN, H2N, plus 2, where N is greater or equal to what? 1, N starts from 1 and N stands for the number of carbon atoms in the chain. Alkanes, as rightly stated here, are hydrocarbons. And hydrocarbons are compounds that contain only carbon and what? Hydrogen, right? There are three major types of um, aliphatic hydrocarbons. We have the alkanes, we have the alkenes, and we have the alkynes. So the alkanes have the general formula stated here, while the alkenes have the general formula CN, H2N and the alkynes have the general formula CN H2N minus 2 where N all represents the number of carbon atoms and N in the alkenes starts from 2 while N in the alkynes starts from 2 2. It's only in the alkenes where the N starts from 1 and why is that so? Because in the alkenes they have a functional group which is what? The carbon carbon double bond at least there must be a carbon carbon double bond right in the molecules of the word alkenes whereas in the alkynes there must be a carbon carbon triple bond in their molecules now and for that to occur remember a functional group is a group of atoms or bonds that determine the chemical behavior or the chemical properties of a family of organic compounds and the family of organic compounds are called homologous word series right so it is a functional group that determines how a particular homologous series will behave or how a particular homologous series will react right so for the alkenes it is the carbon carbon double bond whereas for the alkynes it's the carbon carbon triple bond when when it comes to the alkenes the alkenes have no special word functional group they have no special functional group now which means that all the carbon atoms in the alkane molecule have what carbon carbon single covalent word bonds so there's no special functional group in the alkanes now we'll not go beyond this because of our time right when we see more questions or another question on alkanes we'll throw more light on alkanes so but for this the answer is what b question two the simplest member of the group alkanol is commonly known as when answering question one i made mention of homologous series and I said homologous series is a family of what? Organic word compounds that follow a regular structural pattern and in which successive members differ by the CH2 group, right? Or a mass of what? 14. Examples of homologous series are the alkanols, the alkanes, which we looked at in the previous question, the alkenes, the alkynes, the alkanoic acids etc right we have the esters the amines and so on and so forth right now the alkanol is also a type of what homologous series then the alkanols are also known as what the alcohols so now the simplest member of the group of alkanol is commonly known as fine the general formula of, an al of the alkanols was cn h2n plus one o h where the functional group is what is the OH. This OH is the functional group of the word alkanols and the, it is known as what? The hydroxyl group. Right? Fine. And what is the smallest number of N? N here starts from what? 1. Just like your alkane. That is to tell us that the alkanols are derived from the alkane. Remember we say the alkanes have a general formula of what? CNH2N plus 2. Right? Where N starts from 1. And now the alkanols have a general formula of CN h2n plus 1 oh what do we see here 
that one of the hydrogen atoms in the alkane is replaced with what the hydroxyl group so it means that if the first member of the alkane if n is one here for the alkanes the simplest member of the alkane will be ch4 which is what methane the simplest member will be what ch3 o what h right ch3 o h which is what me tha what no right so what do we observe here that the alkanols are named by what replacing the e in the alkane right with what with an o the last e in the alkane is replaced with what with an ol when naming the word the alkanol since the root name of the organic compound that contains only one carbon atom is meth right then the simplest alkane is called what a methane while the simplest alkanol is called methanol but from the options that we have here we have methyl alcohol ethyl alcohol trimethyl alcohol and triethyl alcohol now these names are based on the old names not the iopac word nomenclature right and because it's based on the old names methyl here is ch3 ethyl is c2h5 trimethyl means that it contains what three methyl groups right and triethyl means it contains three ethyl groups in the molecule right so since we're looking for the simplest that's the first member of the group the answer is what methyl alcohol because that is the equivalent name of what methanol so the answer is what a the general formula for alkenes is very answer this question when we're answering question one remember when we're answering question one we listed out the general formulas of the three hydrocarbons aliphatic hydrocarbons right that's the alkenes alkenes and alkynes right and we said that the general formula of the alkenes is cn h2n where n starts from what two right so without wasting time on this question our answer is what a right but let's look at other options b cn h2n plus two from what we have explained which homologous series has that general formula cn h2n plus two if you say alkanes then you are correct now cn h2n minus two which homologous series is that if you say anything other than alkynes then you are wrong right then cn h2n plus one now cn h2n plus one is not a homologous series instead it is a general formula of the alkyl group the alkyl group is a group that have one hydrogen atom they have one hydrogen atom less than what the corresponding alkanes they have one hydrogen atom less than the corresponding what alkanes in other words they are derived from the alkanes so if the alkane is cn h2n plus 2 it means that the alkyl group here would be what cn h2n plus what one right and they are named by replacing the e in the alkane with what y l that's why if you look at the first member of the alkane ch4 methane if we remove one hydrogen from methane we'll get what ch what three which is what methyl which is what we saw in that question too right so and methyl is what is an alkyl group you can see the e in the methane is replaced with what y l right so similarly for ethane c2h6 right the corresponding alkyl group will be what c2h5 which is what ethyl so as you can see these alkyl groups cannot stand alone like the alkanes alkenes and alkynes because they are not homologous they are not group of organic compounds they are just substrates that make up an organic word compound and normally in organic chemistry this formula cnh2n is also represented as what capital what r so means that wherever you see capital r in the formula of organic compound it represents what the alkyl group that's why for the alkanes i can write my alkanes as what r h right i can write my alkanos as what r o h i can write my carboxylic acid as what r c o o what h so so to learn more about the rudiments of naming organic compounds right you may need to watch our video on naming of organic compounds the iopac nomenclature of organic compounds we have added the link in the description so coming back to our question here so you have been able to identify the different groups that have this formula so d is the alkyl group c is the alkynes b is the alkanes so but our question says general formula for alkenes so and we said that the answer is what a all right to the next question 
Question 4. Which of the following contains at least one triple bond between two carbon atoms in the chain? At least one triple bond between two carbon atoms in the chain. At least one triple bond. Do we need to waste time on this? Given our explanation to question number one, what do you think the answer would be? The alkynes, definitely. Because you say the alkanes have no special functional group. They all have single bonds. Where well, the alkanes have carbon-carbon double bonds. Now the alkynes have what? Carbon-carbon triple bonds. Of course, the alkanos, which are derivatives of the alkanes, right? Also have carbon-carbon single bond, but with what? An OH word group or the hydroxyl group. So the answer is what? C. Question 5. That is a hydrocarbon with a number of double bonds that interact with each other. Okay, we already know what hydrocarbons are, right? Or what a hydrocarbon is. We know what double bonds and triple bonds mean, right? Fine. Now, from analysis of question 1, we said that alkenes have what? Double bonds. Alkynes have triple bonds, right? Well, alkenes have carbon, carbon, what? Single bond. But from what we have here, we have specific members of the homologous series. We have ethene, we have ethyne, and we have what? Arenes and what halo alkane. Of course, it cannot be halo alkane. So B is out. Now we have A, C, and what? D. Now it cannot be C because C is what? Ethyne. And ethyne is an alkyne, right? And alkynes have what? Carbon, carbon, triple bonds. So it cannot be ethyne. So this is out. D is ethene. And ethene is an alkene. And being an alkene, it has what? A carbon, carbon, what? Double bond. Which is what is given in the question, right? It said, with a number of double bonds, but there is a clause here that interact with each other. In ethene, ethene has only one double bond. Ethene does not have a number of double bonds. Now, for the molecule to have a number of double bonds that interact with each other, it means that it has more than one double bond. It has more than one double bond, right? But from our analysis here, ethene has only one double bond. It cannot be worth ethene. Can be ethene. Ethene is out. Now let's look at the arenes. When we were solving question, we only we made mention of aliphatic hydrocarbons. We say aliphatic hydrocarbons are the alkanes, alkenes, and what alkynes, right? Fine. We did not make mention of another group of hydrocarbons called what aromatic hydrocarbons. Aromatic hydrocarbons. These aromatic hydrocarbons are members of the word benzene family. At least you've seen the structure before. The benzene word structure or something like this. Or something like this. That's what C6H6. Now, a benzene molecule has six carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms, right? Bonded in such a way that there are three seemingly carbon-carbon double bonds right with three seemingly what carbon carbon single bonds right i say seemingly because those are not actually what double bonds neither are they actually what single bonds because of the planar structure of benzene those bonds fall in between what a carbon carbon double bond and a carbon carbon what single bond uh, however on the surface they look like what double bonds and what single bonds actually if i'm to draw this structure openly will obtain something like this. So, we have three alternating what? Double bonds. A double bond alternated with what? A single bond. You can see carbon, carbon, double bond. Then carbon followed by carbon, carbon, single bond. Followed by carbon, carbon, double bond. Followed by carbon, carbon, single bond. Followed by carbon, carbon, what? Double bond. And then carbon, carbon, what? Single bond. And each of those carbon atoms has one hydrogen atom attached to it so which gives it the molecular formula c6 what h6 right so any compound that has this benzene like structure maybe a hexagon and an inscribed circle inside it is what is an aromatic word compound right but not necessarily aromatic hydrocarbon it can only be aromatic hydrocarbons when it contains only carbon and hydrogen are we together so like this benzene Benzene here contains only carbon and what? Hydrogen. So it's what? A hydrocarbon. So it means that the answer to this question is what? Arenes. And that is what? A. Question 6. Alkanoic acid contains the dash as their functional group. I've not really laid much emphasis on alkanoic acid since I started, right? But I've done so on alkanols, alkenes, alkynes, alkanes, fine. Now, alkanoic acids are also called what? Carboxylic word acids. 
So they are called what alkanoic acids. And they have the general formula CN H2N plus 1 C O O what H. You can see they are more or less like derivatives of alkane, in which one of the hydrogen atoms in the alkane is replaced with what? The carboxylic word group. That's the functional group. So this is the functional group here is what C O O word H with the structure C double bond O O and what H, right? So that's the, that the carboxylic or carboxyl group. Are we together? Here, n starts from where is greater or equal to what zero. Why is n greater or equal to zero? Because in this formula, C N H two N plus one C O O H. This carbon atom, the carbon atom in this functional group is always constant. It does not change. So that's where we start counting from. So that's always carbon number what one. Carbon number one. So if this is already one, then for the first member of the group, how many other carbon atoms do I need to have one carbon atom? Of course, zero. So that's why the first member of the group is what? H, C, O, O, what? H. Why? Because N here is equal to what? Zero. When N is zero here, we have H, C, O, O, H. And because there is one carbon atom here, so we will name it what? Methanoic, methanoic what? Acid, acid. So the second member, for the second member, N will be equal to what? 1. Because this is already the first carbon. The functional group carbon. This functional group carbon is already the first carbon. And the second member will contain two carbon atoms. So how many more carbon atoms will we need to make it 2? That's 1. So when N is 1, this will become what? CH3COO what? H. And we call it what? Ethanoic acid. We call it ethanoic acid. So, as we have explained now, that naming continues methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, propanoic acid, butanoic acid, and so on and what so forth. Like I advised you earlier, you may need to watch that video on naming of organic word compounds. The link is in the description. Fine. So coming back to this question, alkanoic acids contain the dash as their functional group. Hydroxyl group is the functional group of what alcohols. That's what the OH, which I had explained earlier. Carboxylic group is what I've just explained now, which is for the carboxylic word acids the ester group the ester group is the coo that's the ester group the esters are derivatives of what of the alkanoic acids or carboxylic acids that's the ester group coo right with bonds in the front and the back those bonds show that the functional group does not stand alone the functional group is bonded to a chain right so you cannot stand alone so if that's why if you are writing the functional group of an organic compound just write it as let's say oh without a dash if you write this as a functional group of alcohols then you are what wrong because that's not a functional group of what alcohol. there's nothing like that in chemistry just oh right it is either it is what oh minus or oh with a word bond oh minus here being what hydroxide ion and oh with a bond here being what hydroxyl group that's the functional word group so likewise the functional group of alkanoic acid is coo word H with a what bond, which is carboxyl what group. Of course, we have the ester group and then the acidic group. The acidic group is nothing like the acidic group. In chemistry, we want to represent an acid. We present an acid with what H plus. So the answer is what B. Question seven: Crude oil can be separated into different portions by means of. Now this is on fractional distillation of what crude oil, right? Crude oil is a type of what fossil what fuel, also called petroleum. Is a liquid form of what fossil fuel right other fossil fuels are natural gas and coal coal is a solid fossil fuel one natural gas is a gaseous fossil fuel right now fossil fuels are the remains of organic matter that have been buried underneath and acted upon by high temperature and what pressure right so those are what fuel. when those substances now burn in oxygen they produce a high amount of what energy so those are what fossil fuels and that's why you have your petroleum natural gas and what cool fine fractional distillation of crude oil is used to obtain what is used to obtain the different fractions of what crude oil like like your petrol your kerosene your diesel right your cooking gas etc right now all these fractions are separated based on the difference in what their boiling points 
right remember petroleum or crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons right so when you now hit the crude oil in a fractionating word tower right you hit the crude oil a fractionating card tower that's in the industry or in a, in a setup yes for fractional distillation in the lab right there will be a separation the gases with very low boiling point will have to what evaporate first that's the gases that contain uh, carbon one to carbon what four that is from methane to butane who we'll do what evaporate what yes they will vaporize first although other hydrocarbons will also go with them that have close boiling points as they do but when they get to the fractionating column that's where the separation takes place the fractionating column acts as a what as a barrier or as a traffic that suspends the molecular compounds with higher boiling points and allows those with a lower boiling points to pass through and when they pass through they now get into the library condenser and are then what condensed to what liquid are we together fine so that's how the separation what takes place fractional distillation of crude oil i repeat fractional distillation of crude oil works based on the what differences in the what boiling points of the fractions right so the answer to this question is what fractional distillation because it cannot be what simple distillation use fractional distillation to separate a mixture of miscible liquids with close boiling what point so the answer is what fractional distillation one may ask why is it not simple distillation simple distillation actually is used to obtain a solvent a solvent now like your water from a solution if you want to obtain your water from let's say your salt solution uh, or your sugar solution you use what simple distillation are we together yes use simple distillation but if you want to separate two miscible liquids like ethanol and water with close boiling points or even wide boiling points but for the fact that there are two miscible liquids you want to get a perfect separation right then we always go for what fractional distillation of course crystallization is used to recover solutes from solutions solutes that are not stable to heat solutes that decompose on high water temperature right we use crystallization to recover them from their water solutions instead of evaporating them to what to dryness right we carry out crystallization to recover them from their water solution because if we use evaporation to dryness they will decompose before the solvent dries off completely and of course chromatography is used for separating the constituents of a colored word mixture right like your dyes your ink and the rest it's also used for separating a mixture of amino acids and carbohydrates all right so that's why the answer is what fractional distillation and the major difference in the setup between a fractional distillation and simple distillation is the presence of the word fractionating word coulomb in fractional distillation which is absent in simple distillation so the answer once again is what fractional distillation and that is c and the last question in this module question eight that is the process whereby lipids are broken up in water into millions of very small droplets now what are lipids lipids are what fats and oils those are lipids i know that lipids are not miscible with what water so there are some fats that are soluble in water you have water soluble fats right so we are not talking about those ones generally lipids are not soluble in what water so and this way have fat or oils plus what water they will not mix normally right so to make them mix you have to add something that will bring the two layers together remember these guys are what non-ionic non-ionic and because they are non-ionic they are said to be what hydrophobic you know what they hate water they hate water whereas this one is what is a polar is a polar covalent word molecule right at least it has some charge polar ends we talked about this in our last tutorial when we were describing the hydrogen bonds in what alcohols right so for this size to interact with water you need to bring in what we call what an emulsifier you need to bring in what we call what an emulsifier or an emulsifying what agent that has both a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic word end now this emulsifier has both what hydrophilic that's water loving and what a hydrophobic end right an example of emulsifier is your what soap your soap is an example of what of emulsifier a soap has two ends the hydrocarbon chain something like this 
So the soap has two major two parts like this, the hydrocarbon tail that contains the alkyl group, the carbon and hydrogen part of it, and the ionic head that contains most times the word the COO minus Na word plus or COO word minus K plus, right? That makes up what the ionic word head. Are we together? Fine. So when this soap now gets in between two enemies, right? That is fat and water or oil and water. What does it do? It tries to bring the two enemies what together. The ionic head of the soap is hydrophilic. You know what? It loves water. It, it interacts with what water. The ionic head of the soap, which is hydrophilic, will interact with the water molecules, right? So it will hold the water molecules. While the hydrocarbon tail, which is hydrophobic, right, will interact with the what? With the fats and or oils, right? And hold them together. So by so doing, the fat and oil and water will come what together, right? With the help of the what? of the soap which is what an emulsifying what agent or an emulsifier so we have something like this let me call this fat and oil fo coming together with a soap and what in what water so we have something like this so this is now what you see as what droplets right small small what droplets are we together and that gives us a form of what emulsion right so that is what you see or this is what you experience when after eating your food you want to wash your dishes after eating your food right so when you put your oily plates in your sink right of water or a bath of water what happens when you don't add soap yet you see the oil droplets staying on one part and the water staying on one part they don't mix right but when you now add your soap let's say your um, liquid soap or your bar soap and, and when you apply it on the dishes what happened before you know it you find out that the oil droplets have mixed up with the what water molecules so you cannot actually what differentiate them again so that is what happens right the soap there has succeeded in what bringing the two enemies that's oil and what water together or fat and water together and by so doing so to now be what easier to wash the oils or the fats of what the plates using what your soap so the answer to this question is what emulsification now what is saponification Saponification is the making of soup. It's actually the alkaline hydrolysis. It's the alkaline hydrolysis of fats and oils. So it is not emulsification. Emulsification is what I've just explained. The ability to make fats or oil that's lipids to what to mix up with what water or to break up in water into millions of small droplets using an emulsifier. Right now, my cells. My cells are a collection of soap molecules, something like this. That's a micelle, a group or a collection of what soap molecules. And that's how the soap works when it acts as a wet cleansing agent. It crowds round a dirt, right? As you have seen on the screen there, the dirt will be in the center of the soap molecule. So depending on the type of dirt it is, it will try to dissolve its ionic head in the dirt. If the dirt is ionic, or if the dirt is covalent, it will try to dissolve its hydrocarbon tail in the soap. Which by the orientation will be what the opposite of this. So it will try to dissolve its hydrocarbon tails in the dirt. And by so doing, with little agitation, it will be easier to what to push the dirt of the word fabric. Then cracking. Cracking is the decomposition or the breaking down of large molecular hydrocarbons, most times alkanes, right, into low molecular and more useful word hydrocarbons, right. Most times alkanes and what alkenes. So cracking can occur in the presence of high temperature and high what pressure, right? But cracking can also occur at a reduced what temperature and the presence of a word catalyst. When it occurs in the presence of a catalyst, it's known as catalytic cracking. But when it occurs at high temperature without a catalyst, it's known as thermal cracking. Catalytic cracking is always better than thermal cracking because it's cheaper and it's easier to what control because of the lower temperature the catalyst commonly used in cracking is alumina silica right alumina silica a mixture of alumina and silicon four oxide fine so that's that on cracking the major product in fact crack is used to obtain more petrol the petrol obtained from fractional distillation of crude is not always enough to meet the demands of the populace right so that's why the higher molecular hydrocarbons alkanes are always converted to more useful word hydrocarbons like the petrol right and when that happens the alkene is always produced as a by-product either alkene or hydrogen 
can be produced as a word by product. And this cracking is a major source of producing or manufacturing ethane in the industry. Cracking of hydrocarbons. All right. So with that, the answer is what? Emulsification. So this brings us to the end of our tutorial for today. If you have learned anything, which I'm sure you have in this tutorial, kindly drop your comments and hit the like buttons. Also, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to subscribe to this channel to stay updated with new uploads. In our next tutorial, we try to solve more questions on organic chemistry and after that, we'll move to another topic. Don't forget that value only has value when value is valued. So keep adding value to yourself until I see you when I'll see you.